Well, hello everybody. Once again, another episode of Seize Your Business. I'm Jim Wyzek from Success Enhancement, and I, my co-host is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law. And uh, today's topic is don't just sit there. And what we're seeing is um, a lot of entrepreneurs uh, today are uh, a little bit older. Maybe they're tired of their corporate uh, routine. And uh, so we want to talk about ways to uh, stay healthy while you're entrepreneuring. And our guest today is Peggy Kinst from Ageless Grace. I've known Peggy for uh, quite a number of years. She's always been an entrepreneur. She's always been in the wellness field. So we thought we'd um, talk to her a little bit about how to stay well while you're entrepreneuring. Well, why don't you first start, Peggy, tell us a little bit about Ageless Grace and what's its, uh, what's its purpose and who do you serve? And Well, I've been in wellness for 45 years. Um, and I've taught just about everything from the Jane Fonda era and the jazzercise and the weightlifting and the, you know, race walking and, um, the, you know, the pounding of the pavement type thing. And, uh, I think as we, I see so many, as we get older, see so many people with knee injuries and bad backs and bad hips. And, and I, you know, being, I am 69 and I'm. Um, really? Yeah. I yeah. think you're like 39. I am. <laughs> wow. I am. I am 39. So we better, but it, you better all start getting whatever she's selling. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so um, I've always been looking for ways to keep healthy. I actually I actually went into the wellness field because I had an intestinal disease, and that's gone. And, and I want to make sure that I stay. And my parents both had, you know, brain um type diseases, and so when Ages Grace came out, and Ages Grace is an anti-aging fitness program for body and brain, so that was in itself um, just an awesome way of looking, because we've never talked about brain or neuroplasticity mm -hmm. or, you know, cognitive decline. We didn't talk about those things, um, and Denise Medved, who created this program, um, started this program almost 16 years ago. It took her almost six years to, um, uh, to create this program. Um, because her mother had Alzheimer's. And when I found out that she had created this program and she'd been in fitness and been a black belt, NIA, actually international trainer and had written a lot of the curriculum, she came up with this, it's a seated exercise program. And people usually think of seated exercise, mm -hmm. for, oh no, I, I, that's boring, that's benign, mm -hmm. I, I, that's for old people. But what we're finding is, is that actually being seated uses more of your core and, and your mm. core muscles, but it also is a way to stave off cognitive decline. And um, Aegis Grace is in, unique in that it is based on 21 anti-aging tools. Um, each tool addresses one of the factors of aging. Um, so we have 21 tools and they each have a primary benefit. And some of them is for, for body. We want from ages five to 110 now, um, to, to keep our bodies and our brains functioning so that we don't get dementia or Alzheimer's. And we're starting with the kids because the kids, um, if we can start young enough, we can, we can build a cognitive reserve that will retire getting dementia, even if we have the plaques and tangles mm -hmm. of Alzheimer's. Um, we don't have to get it. Um, if we stay active, from the time that we're children to the time that we die. Now, even if you start at age 55 and you become active, that can start building up this cognitive reserve. Um, but we have to keep our bodies healthy because otherwise we're gonna end up in nursing homes. Um, we have to keep our minds active or else we're gonna end up in nursing homes. And so this program is unique in that um, some of them, it's also an education program. So what, like for example, the first tool is juicy joints. Now that kind of sounds kind of silly, but the whole premise behind it is, is that we're working with joint mobility. And not only are we working with joint mobility, but we're teaching them where are your joints? What's your mirror joints? Why do we why do we do this? Why do we need synovial fluid? So every tool that we teach, and I'm an international trainer, so I train all over the world, teaching people to be able, or actually training people and certifying them to be able to teach in any facility that they want, from school school age kids to healthy people in fitness clubs to rehab and hospitals and mm -hmm. and even um, in um, assisted living and especially in memory care because we 
can start reversing that dynamic if we keep them active. And, um, and we have one called Sp Spaghetti Spine, which is all about mobility of the spine and teaching them about the 26 areas of their spine. But then we get into neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity is something that we all need to know what that means. And neuroplasticity, if you break up the word, neuro uh, is the nerves, our mm -hmm. brain cells. Mm -hmm. And plasticity is, is that our brains are plastic. We can mold them. It used to be that once you hit 21, your brain wasn't going to develop anymore. By the time you hit 40, it was already on the downswing. And by 60, just sit in that chair and wait for death because mm -hmm. that's all that was going to happen. Well, now, excitingly so, the research points out that that's absolutely unfounded, that we actually can develop our brains, we can build new neurons, we can make new connections, we can strengthen synapses. There is all kinds, I, I became a member of this, of this neuroscience academy, and the research that's coming out, but it all points to you have to move your body, you have to do aerobic type activity. So if um, you says we can still develop the brain, so what, what kinds of activities help develop the brain? I've heard like crossword puzzles and things like that that are good to keep doing. I don't know if that's true or not, but... Well, the, let me give you the definition of neuroplasticity. It's ability of the brain and the nervous system to change its structure and function by doing different activities throughout your life. So, yes, if you start doing crossword puzzles, and you keep increasing the difficulty of them, and it challenges your brain. But if you just get up every morning and go, oh, it's not doing anything, and Sudoku is not doing anything. What we need to do, and some of our tools are like, team sports. We actually have them, okay, we're going to play baseball mm -hmm. now. We're going to throw that ball. So not only are we building their bodies, but the brain's going, if, wow, Jim, you hit that ball. Well, if you had played baseball as a kid, the brain's quite cool. I remember he used to do that. Let's restore that neural pathway. But if I had never played hockey, but I could recall it or think about it, then the brain's going to go, wow, she never did that before. So let's build a new neural pathway. We could build neural pathways for even personality and um, gaining habits. But I have a question for you. Maybe this will help you understand. Who has a bigger, more developed brain? A bus driver or a cab driver? A cab driver. Absolutely. And why is that? Because he's always got to figure out new places and new routes. He's used, not the same exactly. thing. And that means he's using his five functions of the brain. So you're, so, so you're sort of saying, like, learning new things is, is great. Learning new things, learning a new language, learning to play excuse me, play an instrument is probably two of the best things you can do. Also, learning something and then telling someone about it or teaching someone okay. about it, that's huge in your, in, the, in your development. We have a tool called Spelling Bee for Body and Brain, and it's using the five same five functions that the cab driver uses, strategic planning to know how to go from point A to point B, analytical thinking, memory recall, creativity and imagination, and kinesthetic learning. And all of those things are what's activating our, our brains. And another thing that's really important is music. Listening to music, you've heard about Alive Inside, where they're putting um, uh, earphones and iPods with their favorite music, and they're getting up, the dementia patients are getting up and dancing and singing and bringing them back to life, mm -hmm. because that, that actually lights up their brain like a jukebox. Yeah. So um, anything that we can do to keep ourselves active, obviously to eat good foods and to stay away from all of the research that says about wheat and 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 carbohydrates most and of sugar that I eat. Yeah, right. so many eat some vegetables and fruits yeah, yeah. The, you know the mediterranean mediterranean diet and to be social you know, to go, even just going to classes is important. And you talking talk to, to people. people. Yeah. Sure. And sure. Um, and drinking water. Water is hydration. Your brain is 85% water. Okay. But it can't 
create its own water. So if you're not drinking water, the brain's not getting water. And sometimes when you're really fatigued, you're thinking, oh, I'm so tired. My, I just feel like I'm in a fog. And you are because your yeah. brain's not getting any hydration yeah. as well as all the other parts of your body. Yeah. So it's, it, um, and another thing that all of you should know too, that when you're sitting, um, all of us do it. If you're sitting more than an hour or two at a time, you should be getting up and moving your eyes around, yeah. getting your body up. And we have two tools that I love. One's the, one's the juicy joints that moves all the joints in our body. And another one's shake it up, baby. And mm -hmm. it's just totally shaking your body yeah, and shaking yeah, yeah. your legs. But why? You know, it sounds kind of silly, but it builds collagen. It uh, releases tension in the fascia. The fascia is that is that spider web of connective tissue under your skin uh, okay. all through your body. If you don't move it, you will not be able to move it. So we're releasing that tension in the fascia and we're releasing extra excess cortisol. Um, sitting is the new smoking disease. Mm -hmm. It's it is so I could go on and on and on. I've done lectures on don't just sit there, but mm -hmm. it can it's damaging to your body. So those of you who are entrepreneurs or sitting at a office job, you have to get up and move and drink your water and and go and talk to somebody first. Well, second. you know what they have, which I think is kind of neat, is those I don't know what they call them, but. They like sit on your desk and it raises your computer so you can stand up for a while and work. Yeah, they have standing desks and be, yeah. sitting on a ball. And but you know what? I wanted to get back to something else you said. I think I should have you talk to my wife because I tried like singing to her, but she just says it annoys her. So I, she's not seen those lights come on or whatever. <laughs> it is that You have to sing a song uh, that she likes, you see. Oh, <laughs> and then she can sing with you. That's oh, the whole thing, is it? No, nobody can sing with me because their sounds come out of this that nobody else can. Like, well, it's it, that's a great idea. So what are some tips it, for those of us who are, I mean, I remember when I was an associate before I was, you know, going to meetings a lot, I would be at my desk for eight or nine hours, maybe take a lunch break, and like by the end of the day, you just feel this level of exhaustion where your brain shuts down. And your feet are swollen and you feel hurts. fatigued, yeah. So is it just getting up and walking around or do you have some tricks for people that they can do you know, while they're working, they're exercising their chair. Or? Yeah, they can do. They shake it up, baby. They should be doing something every twenty minutes to an hour. So they should set their timer, and it's not even just the body, but the eyes. It can damage the eyes every twenty minutes. You should make a concerted effort to look away from your computer and focus on something else, and then go back to your computer. Um, there, it's just. It's amazing how our bodies can keep us functioning with all the horrible things we do to them, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, be good to your bodies and, and, you know, have water by your desk. Get up and move a little bit. Go and talk to somebody or, you know, or take a break and read and tell something. Tell that to somebody that you just read. Well, you know, it strikes me that one of the uh, things I enjoy is, is golf, and that would seem to me to be a great thing for people to take up because that is both the physical aspect as well as the mental aspect. As long as you, it, as long as it's not just the only thing you do. Sure. You should play golf one day, go swimming another day, do some aerobic activity, weight train, you know, to, you know, do some um, uh, any kind of any other kind of bicycling so what the brain is saying is challenge me i, I want to be challenged i can't keep you know if you keep doing the same things over and over again i I'm, I'm gonna just you know i'm not gonna just, improve just like any muscle it like atrophies if, if you, you don't use, use it you lose it that is that's the term for your brain that's a term for your body um it's um your body is an amazing thing, but we have to learn to take care of it and to mm -hmm. nurture it and to exercise it and um, and, and I, I imagine like, you know, 200 years ago, we didn't have these concerns because life was so different that you had always been engaged just to survive. And now we have to worry about our kids. Our kids at this point in time are not going to live as long as their parents. It's the most frightening thing That's with the obesity rate and the yeah, and the diabetes rate and the spinal spinal stenosis with the with the technology um it's yeah that's the that that is the research that ki children that were born after a uh, after 2009 are not going to live as long as their parents because they're already starting to show 
um, That's very interesting. dramatic effects um, with their bodies. And, and you know what I noticed? Uh, kids today, their they're, life is so scheduled and organized. I mean, I remember being a kid, we had, we had invent all kind of fun games and crazy things to do with the kids today. They're addicted, okay, they're, they're, they're addicted yeah. to technology. Yeah. And another thing that's kind of scary, I just read some research, um, that between the ages of birth and six months, that's one of the most pivotal times for development of the brain, okay? Um, if that child is moving, swaddling the babies and keeping them tight, that the only way they can, the only way they can activate their brains and start developing sure, their sure, brains is to move, sure. is to move. And that's why they say it's better for a child not to walk too fast, to crawl longer okay. than walking. Okay. So it affects all of us. It affects the children. It affects the, you know, the healthy, um, healthy adults look at us and say, well, it's chair exercise. Come to one of our classes. I mean, after a half an hour class, I'm sweated. Plus mm -hmm. I learn so much. And then we get into, you know, the, the active 55 and over and they love working out and being social. Then we get into the nursing homes and I have sometimes people that, you know, that are just sitting there like this. But if with music and with movement and with sociability, they we can change their brains. We can improve their bodies and their brains. And it's exciting and rewarding for me because I'll be doing a demo. I don't teach classes, but I do lots of demos mm -hmm. for residents or communities. And they'll look at me and they'll, and, and when I say, it doesn't matter how old you are. And I used to say from age five to 100 and, 105. And then I had a woman that was 107 in ah, the class okay. just sitting there, yeah, you know, yeah, working yeah. out. And so now I have to say 110. But they look at you like, Wow, you mean to tell me I don't have to just sit here and die? Mm -hmm. I can I can actually start improving myself. And that's not just for, you know, the people that are 90 and 100 or 80 and 70. This is for the whole population. Every single person in the world should mm -hmm. be doing an aerobic type exercise at least 10 minutes a day. It's all you need is 10 minutes to build BDNF, mm -hmm. which is, you know, a, a, it's a, the protein that helps create um, more development in the brain. And that has been shown to be increased so much just by moving and exercising. So, um, so as far as working and um, it's a wonderful thing to be an entrepreneur, but we have the same, um, what do you want to call it? We have the same negative things that other people, that corporate people do, because we do, we sit, we get involved, we get focused, and we have to start taking some time to do things for our bodies, you know, by the same things that we've been talking about. Sleep is another one. I just read an article that just, that just made it sound, we go to bed and our brain is like a jungle. I mean, it's like we've got so many, you know, um, so many synapses going in. And when we don't get enough sleep, we don't have these little microglias that come in and prune our brain. And so that when we wake up, we have Central Park instead of that jungle. If we're not getting that sleep, we wake up and we wonder why we feel so foggy brained and stuff when we haven't slept because our brain's still a jungle. And then we're going back into, you know, into more dense. So it's important for all reasons to get enough sleep. And that's the research on that is, um, is pivotal as far as um, if we don't get sleep and good sleep, that that can affect the way that not only how we are at this moment, but how we're going to age later on. One of the things that struck me that you were talking about, and it seems to be a kind of theme both for body and brain, was, you know, not just doing the same exercise, but challenging yourself. That's, you know, anyone that's into weightlifting will tell you that if it's better to just do the same exercise than do nothing at all, but if you want to actually grow your muscle or, or uh, get better, you all, you have to trick your muscles and not and do a different exercise than you did last mm -hmm. week. And it seems like the same thing applies to your brain like any other oh, muscle. Absolutely. And and really, that seems like uh, one of the big themes is to continue. Don't just golf. Golf and then swim. Yeah, and, and even I, at the pool, I was at the pool. I'm a swimmer. And one mm -hmm. of our 
tools is dive in and we teach them different different swim strokes and different dives because again most of the people that are older even kids maybe haven't done the breaststroke before so if we're doing that we're building up her body but we're also the brain's going cool oh, she's never been in the water before and what's really cool is the brain does not know you're not in water the brain does not know you're not playing a piano or, mm -hmm. or playing a clarinet it doesn't know that you're you're not playing basketball and you don't actually you're not actually throwing a ball it doesn't know that you're not you know that you're not lifting weights it doesn't understand it just by visualization alone we can actually build biceps without even without even moving our body if we if we actually concentrate and visualize it so anything so i'm in the pool and and i i don't like to i have a eye problems so i don't like to get chlorine in my eyes so i'm sitting on the side sitting on the step and i'm doing all of my you know ages mm -hmm. grace in the water and it's like you can do it anywhere and um, we you know we have one called saving face which is using all the face muscles oh. and so i said just still points are when you sit stuck at a train just go like this to a person next to you yeah yeah or that's my role in life is yeah. making people laugh <laughs> well that's it and laughter is huge laughter is one of the best ways and that's another thing oxygenation getting mm -hmm. these people to breathe because they're sitting like this and yeah, the kids yeah, are yeah, sitting yeah. like that yeah. and they're cutting off they're using only a third of their lungs and we need that oxygen our body uses 25 percent of every breath we use in you know to the activate brain. in the brain so if we're cutting that off that means that the brain's not getting that oxygen either and that's that's another whole um cause of dementia it's not just the hydration but it's the oxygenation so singing whistling laughing and um there was a laughter yoga class and ah, and i just good. said oh I, that's silly and so i thought but peg you gotta do that so i went i had to sit down it was so cardiovascular uh -huh. i mean i it, it was my heart was beating sure. so fast sure. so you have to laugh they say adults laugh seven to eight times a day and little kids laugh 200 times a day yeah, and uh, yeah. usually maniacally from my experience yeah, <laughs> right, right. So well, we I'm definitely closer to the seven-year-old yeah uh, I think th that's level. the way we should live yeah. life if we did what a two-year-old does in activity and laughter we'd be a lot healthier yeah so well thank you for sharing your wisdom yeah, with us yeah that was really fascinating yes. yeah it is it's a wonderful wonderful thing I mean just teaching people that they don't have to just sit there and and wait for death that they can they can change so if, if somebody wants to explore this further with you or has questions what's the best way for them to uh, reach you um you can go to the ages grace web website if you want to see what ages grace is at www.agesgrace.com but if you would like to talk to me i'm my um, email address is my name, Peggy Kinst, P E G G Y K I N S T, at gmail.com. Um, and you can even reach me on my cell phone, which is 630 926 5827. And come and try a class. Another thing that we're doing is we're starting to do hand massage reflexology classes mm. with essential oils. We're finding that um, that with any kind of touch i think that's another thing that we didn't leave out it's just it's just touching someone and letting them know that we care well in nursing homes and in um, hospice and things like that one of the things that we want to do so much is to be able to give them some comfort and ease and so i'm in um, doing now going into nursing homes and bringing in essential oils because with peppermint with just a dab on the back of your neck we can get someone who's had a stroke to be able to react and stay awake through wow. physical therapy but someone who is anxious like like the I call them vintage people get they get real anxious especially at night just a little bit of you know a little bit of lavender or hmm. or wild orange and peppermint can you know can um, can relieve their anxiety and we do it with a certain way of massaging so we have all of those things together Super. so we keep bringing all kinds of things in to keep people healthier and happier so um, that's another whole good well whole thank you
and Kevin, if people need uh, legal advice or, or help. We, we give free they... consultations, and you can call me at 630-324-6666. Uh, also, I'm doing a law podcast uh, by myself. Unfortunately, it's not nearly as funny because Jim's not there, oh, but course, learn dash about dash lawcom is the website for that. And go on seizeyourbusiness.com if you want to see our uh, videos and, and podcasts for business owners. And Jim, how can people reach you? Yeah, your best way is just give me a call, 630 630- Two seven two three eight nine five. If you want to improve your performance in your business, or if you need uh, some comedy, just uh, give me a call. And thank you both very much for having me. And oh, it's been our if pleasure. If anyone wants to get a demonstration of even either the hand massage or the eight just grace, I do do come in and do programs for people. Super. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you yes. very much.